welcome to the educational forum for the mayoral candidates. I'm Sue Hannon, I'm the president of the Manchester Education Association. And thank you all very much for coming. Hey, you're risking that. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah, I don't think kids shout out my room either. <laughs> Besides the fact that it's way too hot. Um, I do want to let you know that this is a question and answer session. This is not a debate. This is not a talk back and forth amongst yourselves. We have specific questions, many of them from you, that um, our candidates will be answering uh, in a very short period of time, generally two minutes, which I will be timing them with. Our moderator this evening is Mark McKenzie. He is a former firefighter in the city of Manchester. He retired as captain. And he's also the former president of the AFL-CIO. So without further ado, I will let Mark take over with the rules and start it up. Have a great evening, everyone. Okay, well, first of all, as, uh, as was mentioned, thank you very much, everybody, for coming out. And we're going to try to make this as, uh, as uh, expedient the questions as best we can. So we're going to start with... Um, Mr. Arnold, and we're going to start with this question, and then we will move down as the question comes up. We'll move down one, uh, so, so we'll end up coming back uh, probably at least uh, twice in the question. Uh, so, excuse me. Do we do opening statements? That's right, we do. Sorry. So why don't we give you uh, each two minutes to do opening statements, and then we're going to do closing statements as well. So I'm uh, Patrick. Thank you very much, uh, Mark. Uh, I want to thank all the educators who are here tonight. I want to thank the support staff. And of course, I want to thank everybody in the audience for showing up. I want to thank the people who organized this event. I want to thank Mark for agreeing to serve as moderator. And I want to thank everyone else who's up here on the stage. I also want to thank uh, my wife, Kathy, who is here tonight. Uh, our daughter, Abby, is sitting this one out, but I suspect that our discussion tonight, one way or the other, is going to affect her. Um, so I want to give her a shout out as well. Many of you know me, either because you cast a vote for me in the race for mayor in 2013 or not. Um, you may know me because I served as an alderman for a couple of terms, representing the west side of Manchester. Thank you. <laughs> Someone once said to me that there are people in this world who know the cost of everything and the value of nothing. Now, I say that that statement is never more tragic than when we're talking about opportunities to educate our children. I ran for mayor in 2013 because I was not happy with the state of our schools. I didn't think that education was a priority. As of today, I still don't think education is a priority, and that's why I'm running for mayor again. I want to change that. I know there are people on this stage who also want to change that, and I'm sure many of you out in the audience also want to change that. And I'm very much looking forward to the conversation we have tonight, the questions and answers, to talk about ideas to make that happen. So thank you very much, and it's a pleasure being here. Every Child Matters in New Hampshire and the YWCA for sponsoring this great mayoral forum. And lastly, I'd like to, to, to thank um, Mr. Sheikh, Mr. Ouellette, and Mr. Arnold uh, for participating, and uh, I want to thank all of you for attending. I'd like to start off by saying how happy I am to be here this evening. Um, I'm happy to have led the fight that this, to, to, I'm happy to have led the fight to support the teacher's contract and override the mayor's veto. And I want to thank many of you in this audience who sent emails and provided phone calls to support our efforts. It was the right and responsible thing to do, and it was a positive step in the right direction to start our school year. I'm running for mayor because I love Manchester, and I believe it's time that we have a mayor who can bring people together to solve issues and move the city forward. As a parent, former school board member, and alderman, it's very obvious to me that Manchester is not living up to its full potential, and we need a mayor who can change that. In order to deal with some of the serious challenges facing our city, such as education, infrastructure, crime, and specifically the heroin epidemic, we need a leader with new ideas who will work with everybody 
to get the resources we need. We need. My vision for Manchester is one where every student receives a quality education, where residents feel safe in their home and safe walking the streets. A bikeable, walkable, walkable city with a vibrant downtown. A city where people want to live and raise their families. And one where new leadership, Manchester isn't afraid to take innovative approaches to realize our full potential. I've always made education a priority and I'm proud of my accomplishments. As an alderman, I worked with my colleagues to develop and pass a budget that gave the schools an additional $3 million, hired more teachers, and brought the tax rate down lower than what the mayor's budget did. As a school board member, I advocated for full day kindergarten, and as an alderman, I made that a reality in every uh, uh, elementary school in the city. Okay, that's a good time to pray. Thank right you. There. Hello everyone, thank you teachers, parents, students, MEA and Mr. McKenzie for giving me an opportunity to be here. I've never been an but so let me tell you who I am and about my American dream. I started education from Tindru Shed in Pakistan. But my family worked hard and because of their sacrifices, I was able to come here to Manchester. Today I say I love Manchester because Manchester people welcome me with their warm welcome and Manchester people have a big heart. It was hard when I came here in 2000. I was lucky enough to find a job in a gas station and there was a night shift working minimum wage. I didn't get much time to sleep. But neither my, neither my American dream did. I found an opportunity to sell cell phones from my trunk. And I brought that business throughout nationwide. And I was rewarded top 10 companies to watch for the state of New Hampshire. Education and personal development were the culture of my company. I eventually went to Harvard Business School and that was my mom's dream. So I achieved Masters in Business and made my mom happy. She'll be in the US in the next few minutes. She's flying right now in Dubai. I had motivators throughout my life. My mother, my teachers. So I'm convinced that our youth doesn't just need resources and tools, but they also need inspiration and motivation. I think we're gonna stop you right there. I'm sorry, we're gonna stick to the two minutes uh, that was allotted to you. Thank you. all these promises and once elected they do the exact opposite. In our city when it comes to education we have something called no child left behind but it's very disturbing when a child starts kindergarten in our school district and in the fifth grade that child is still reading first grade. This year that same child is in the sixth grade and is still reading first grade level. That is not no child left behind. That child has been we need to do better, we must do better. Just having a diploma and not knowing how to read does not guarantee you a job. In this city, 55% of our students are eligible for free school lunch to reduce lunch. That means that our poverty level in our school system is at 55%, but overall in the city, the statistics had just come out two weeks ago that Manchester rates at 57.7 poverty. That's more than half percent of our population. That doesn't look good for our city. Doesn't look good for our kids either. And the reason why our poverty is so high, the result was lack of economic development. Jobs that will meet the skills of our students 
or people who are of the working age. I am a strong believer in high tech, but I also know that a population our size, we are not all gifted to do high tech jobs, which means we need to bring mixed jobs for those that have other skills. I would fight for that because that's part of our education. Thank you very much. That's the end of that. Oh, I guess we don't see him. I'm going to introduce the president of the MBA to explain what's going on. He said education is more important. There you go. Um, I, I do want to just address the fact that we do have an empty podium here. Um, certainly, all five candidates were invited, and all five candidates did respond to us in one fashion or another. Some of them it was by email, some of them it was a return letter, and some of them it was in person, face to face, or even through campaign uh, or staff managers. We had uh, staff who we spoke with in the mayor's office who told us that he would be here on two separate occasions to two separate people in the MEA. Um, and I guess they discovered this past week that uh, there were conflicts and he was not going to be here. So we have it here just in case. Uh, but I did, did want to let you know the reason that he uh, declined to be here. Um, we had also invited Scott Spradley um, to moderate as well. And he, when he found out that the mayor was not coming, he declined to come as well. Um, citing that he was also becoming part of the police commission or something along that line. Um, so, unfortunately, I ended up getting a lot of very vague answers about that, um, and that's what I can give you at this point. So from here, uh, we actually were very excited to be able to have Mark coming in to moderate. Um, this will be excellent for all of you, and we appreciate your opening remarks. Thank you very much, and we appreciate your being here. Have a good evening. Start with the questions that we have that have been vetted by the, uh, the committee and the various uh, organizations. And again, we each have two minutes uh, for this uh, question. So, about one in four uh, children uh, live in, in or at poverty, uh, below 100% of the poverty threshold. Even worse, based on the American Community Survey estimates, nearly 2,500 Manchester children under the age of 18 are considered very poor, living below 50% of the poverty threshold, which comes to about $11,000 a year for a family of four. As mayor, what would you do to help lift city children out of the throes of poverty? Ms. Dunn. Thank you very much for that question. Throughout the course of this campaign, and certainly through the course of my last campaign for mayor, I talked to a lot of people in our city. Knock on a lot of doors, spoke to a lot of people face to face. This year in particular, we see that the opportunity gap in Manchester is wider than it's ever been. The difference between the haves and the have-nots in Manchester is wider than it has ever been, and that is absolutely tragic. When it comes to education and our school system, we see educational opportunities afforded some students, some places in Manchester are not afforded to students in other places in Manchester. That is wrong, and as mayor, I would make sure that every student in Manchester has the same opportunities. The students who attend Beach Street School should have the same opportunities as students who attend Webster Street School. And they should have the same opportunities as those students who attend schools on the west side. Mayor Gatsis used to say that we're a city of one. I think uh, most people here know that he was either mistaken or misrepresenting his plans for how to make that happen. I do think that we should have a city of one, and I think that we start by acknowledging that there are the haves and the have-nots in Manchester, and we need to level that playing field. As mayor, I will make that happen. Great, thank you. Uh, well, ask, uh, there are two things I'd like to ask. Uh, first of all, we would certainly uh, wouldn't mind if you took your jackets off. Um, because it's not as blazes as the, I don't think there'd be any objections to that. Uh, 
Yeah. yeah. Secondly, uh, if you could hold your applause, I would appreciate it. So I'll give you plenty of time to respond. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. McKenzie. Uh, absolutely, poverty in our city is a, is a serious issue, and we have seen a drastic increase over the years. Uh, a few things. Um, there is a program right now that the health department is working on where they will be opening up three neighborhood schools in high poverty neighborhoods. So what's happening is um, the schools will be opened up to parents in the neighborhood outside of school hours. They'll be teaching parents the value of education, of uh, nutrition, um, how they can parent better. So basic skills um, that some uh, families still need to, to uh, to know about, and that's something what I, that I would absolutely support. Um, one other uh, point that I'd like to mention is we have wonderful after-school programs that a number of kids go to. I think it's significantly important that the school district work closely with those programs so that we share grades of the kids that need help. Um, right now, there are an awful lot of programs that help with homework, um, but they really don't have any information outside of what the child provides to them, and if these programs are actually helping the student move forward, we need to partner with them, and I would, I would um, help do that. One of the biggest problems that we're seeing in the school district is a leader who doesn't appreciate education and doesn't communicate. I, on the other hand, have done that, and I have a record of doing that, and I would reach out to every person in this city and help them in terms of what their needs are. We need to, we, if, if there are issues, the mayor of the city needs to know about it. I've been hearing about it as I'm going door to door. We need a leader who's going to do that, and that's what I would do as mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I have a right answer for you. Being an entrepreneur, I know how to bring investors in the city of Manchester. You need to make the kids and their parents self-sufficient. Today, our politicians do not understand that problem. Everybody asks me the question about heaven, about this issue, about that issue. Nobody asks me the question that how we are going to bring the economy and how we're going to thrive in our city. So that is the major problem in the city of Manchester. My solution to that is we will make the Manchester sister city with Silicon Valley. Sister city means in Silicon Valley. What that does is, sister city means you have a legal and social agreement between town to promote cultural and commercial ties. And think outside of the box. What do we, we have to think outside of the box. The poverty does not end with talking about issues. We have to come with a solution. And if you look at the apple, what is Steve Job did? He thought outside of the box. His company was failing. He was fired. He came back in the company. He went to the Japan. He opened the Walkman. From that Walkman, he found out how to make an iPod in 1996. After that, he brought his company back. And today, that's the number one company, trillion, multi-trillion dollar company. This is what we have to do. We need smart solutions. We have to be smart enough to understand what our problems are and how we provide the solution. And as a mayor, I will do that for you, for the poor kids, for their parents, for middle class. Once you make the city sister city, and we will multiply that ten times. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's simple. We live in a city of about 110,000, and every September for nine months between 20 and 25,000 college kids enter our city. That makes us a population of 130,000. The problem that we have is we don't have enough jobs to go around. The poverty statistics very well show that too many parents, too many two-family parents, are only working part-time because they cannot find a full-time job with their skills. Not everybody can do high-tech jobs. I believe in high-tech, but I'm also a person that believes in reality. And of the 110,000 who live here year-round, we all know that not everybody can do high-tech. So I would go outside my community, throughout New England, even in New York, and look for jobs, companies to move to Manchester. But before we do that, we need to relax regulations. I have gone to Concord, I've gone to Keene, Nashua, uh, Gary, and Portsmouth. They follow state statute, federal statute, when it comes to attracting businesses. 
we ask for extras. And when you're too greedy, we become the losers. I would relax those that do not infringe on safety or on anybody else's rights to get more companies here. And the last thing I want to say is that I would create a summer's job for our youth who are in need. And we, my saddest thing is that we have a welfare department that if you're poor and you're in need, that child who earns maybe $80 a week because of the law would have to give that money to their parents. What kind of a lesson does that give to our children? That they earn their money and they can't even use it responsibly to buy their own things that they need to go to school. Thank you. Thank you very much. And so we're going to start this round with, uh, uh, with Ms. Craig. And we're going to have uh, Della Cronin is going to ask a question. She's from Central High School. In the level three class I took my sophomore year, I noticed that there weren't many students of color. The Office of Civil Rights produced a report that said the same thing. I feel students of color were not in my class because they feel they cannot take that class and still succeed. What can you do as mayor to ensure more students of color have access to high level classes and still feel that they can succeed? Thank you, Dalla. That's a great question. Um, you know, I actually have students at Central. Uh, Della has gone to school with my daughter Sarah since elementary school and hear the same thing. What we need to do is a better job of educating parents about the opportunities in high school, um, what the program offerings are, the course offerings, and the availability. Um, I actually don't find out all the information myself, and if we're relying on kids to come home and educate the parents, that's not um, the best thing that we can do. So what I would suggest is um, there are uh, connectors, if you will, in the minority communities. I would reach out to those connectors and make sure that they understand clearly what the opportunities are so that they can communicate to parents and make sure their kids are signing up for those classes. Um, you know, again, it boils down to better communication, parents understanding what the opportunities are, and making sure that the kids are enrolled in those classes. It would be great if the, the guidance counselors, if they have time, could help with that as well. Uh, they have an awful lot on their plate right now, uh, but if they could help, um, I think that would be a benefit to make sure that every child in the Manchester School District has a clear understanding of what the opportunities are for them and they take advantage of those. Thank you. Um, Mr. Alibaba, can you respond now? Absolutely. It's a great question. I believe what I see the problem is there's a no right onboarding for immigrants who come here. If a student is coming in the fifth grade, they just moved in the fifth grade. We have to have a right onboarding, we have to have a right test to make sure that the students and their parents understand that that children is qualified to get in there. If not, we have to give them at least six months to a year right training to qualify them for that class. So once you do that, then you won't see any problem. That children and their parents both will understand that how to exceed them and how they will excel. The children will understand that too. And, and every student deserves the American dream and every student must get equal opportunity. So this is not just that children or their parents' problem. This is whole administration fault and they have failed that, and now shifting blame is not enough. We need to come out with a solution. The solution is onboarding in the right way, and one, two, three steps. Three months do this, three months do that. I have done that in my, one of my company when the immigrants used to come as investors. I had to onboard them. To, so they understand the culture, they understand the language. Because what I've met in science is, it's probably not the method science in their country. So we have to take ownership rather than chipping claims. That is our problem. If you come out of that, everything is simple. New York has done that, Ohio has done that, about 10 other states have done that. It is our time to do that. Once we do the right things, I think we will put our children on a path to succeed. And every children will succeed. Thank you. I'm a very strong believer in 
and don't hesitate to say no when the answer should be no for the benefit of our community. We live in, the, in a community of 98 nationalities, 82 languages in our high schools. If we teach like we're supposed to be teaching, everyone should have the same opportunity. That's what public education is supposed to be about. We take a lot of federal funding like Title I, yet we still have children left behind. If I become mayor, I would look into all federal educational funding, and if we can prove that we can do better without their 17 cents on the dollar, then we should not take it and use our own money, which costs us less. Some of these mandates that the federal government is throwing down our throats is unreasonable. Common Core is one of them. I am not in favor of the smile balance assessment test because it was not based on good education. It was based on our school district to accept federal money. That's no, more, that's no better than a bribe. I thought we were here to educate our kids. And now they, they know that. And so Washington, D.C. is now changing that. And they're going to call it something else. And they're going to test once a week instead. That's even worse. That means every week of the school year will be tested. Why are we teaching to a test? We have great teachers in this city that know how to teach. Let them do their job and tell the government to get out of local control.
they have not found the person who shot her. If we would have the predictive policing, the technology, the surveillance system, it would not have taken time. First of all, the crime wouldn't have happened. And if it would have happened, the criminal would have found in the next two minutes. This is what technology does. And this is where I belong from. I spent 12 years in technology. I started my business in technology. When I see these problems in the city of Manchester, my heart is crushed when somebody die, die like that and you cannot find a criminal. We need to bring smart policing and smart technology in the city of Manchester to resolve these issues. You would see this is a solution is there. City of Manchester do not have to pay for that. Taxpayers do not have to pay for that. What are my politicians doing? Where were they? Where were Mr. Cat yesterday six years ago? Today we have put the three deaths every day. We would not have this problem if we bring the smart policing. And I, I have given my proposals, you will see in Sunday paper, one, two, three. How it needs to be done and how it will be done. New York does it, 50 other cities does it. Why not we? Thank you. I believe if we can reach our students at a young age, we save them more often than not. How many of you here remember the program, the DEAR program? We need to create, I want to create a program if I become mayor that will go for the fifth and sixth grade, an entire semester on educating on drugs, crimes, and how to get away from games. We don't do that anymore in our schools. We need more of that. Education isn't just books. It's also teaching kids a livelihood. Too many games are entering our city, and we do not give the tools to our police officers. We know since 2005 that we need 200 and 32 police officers, 12 months out of the year. Yet, June 9th of this year, when they passed the budget, the word was we had 220 police officers. Five weeks later, after hiring five more through federal funding, we should have had 225. Guess what? Because four people retired, we're down to 221. If you budget 232, Immediately, for 12 months out of the year, when one retires, you can rehire. You can't have this imbalance and think you can solve crime. And the gimmicks have to go away. Park police cars in parks that don't move, don't catch criminals. And where do you see in the United States another city where they close an entire park between 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. for the safety of our kids who barely use that park. I would put the police officer in that park because today, the people who visit that park within those hours of the curfew are your criminals. You feel like you and I don't. We abide by the We need to solve it. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Adams. Thank you very much. I really wish this was a debate, Mark. Um, but I'll, I'll give my response like this. Uh, Two years ago, when I ran for mayor, Manchester was looking at its fifth consecutive year of black and crime increases. One might think that would have been a wake-up call uh, to Mayor Gatsis, and yet we've seen that it wasn't. Drugs are, have reached epidemic proportions in our city. And the people I talk to and the experiences I've had myself and my family's had, I don't believe that there is anyone left in Manchester who is unaffected by that particular challenge. We see that individuals are concerned about public safety and violent crime everywhere in our city, and let's not kid ourselves. When a violent crime occurs in any neighborhood in Manchester, it is unacceptable. As to what we do about it, there needs to be accountability. There needs to be focus on achieving results. Whatever Mayor Gatsis' administration has been doing these last six years, they have not achieved the result which all of us want, which is to make our streets safer. 
As mayor, I would bring accountability back to the discussion. We would drive results, and failure would not be an option in terms of getting the drugs off our streets. We would expand opportunities for treatment, but we would get the drugs off our streets and turn this violent crime challenge around. Thank you. It's uh, great. Thank you. Uh, we have seen a significant increase in uh, drug use, heroin specifically. I certainly agree with Chief Willard when he says we cannot arrest our way out of this. Um, just from September 1 to September 8, so this week, we've seen 26 overdoses and two fatalities. This is something we need to act on. Uh, the mayor has been doing an awful lot of talking, but he has failed to collaborate with people to bring solutions to Manchester. We need to take an all-hands-on-deck approach. We need to work with community members. We need to work with local officials, with county officials, with state officials, with federal officials. We need more treatment in Manchester. Right now, when someone, we have to wait for someone to say they need help. When they say they need help right now, they have to wait about seven weeks to get service in Manchester to get help. That's not right. We need to do something about that. I'll just give you an example of how the mayor has failed. He tried to implement a drug court in Manchester. He tried getting it in at the very last minute. He tried pushing it through forcefully. He did not communicate with the state representatives, and he, he failed. Uh, what I did was, when we were developing the budget, we had some surplus money available. I suggested we use some of that surplus toward drug court to show a good faith effort, just to show how serious Manchester is, what the need is. He just threw that aside and said, no, it's against the law. Well, it turns out we got a ruling from the judge. The answer was, it's just something we've never done before. It's perfectly legal. So I would look at every way possible to address this issue, whether we've done it or not. But we need action. For every day we don't have action, we have another person who's overdosing, and that's unacceptable. Great, thank you. Can we bring up a miracle uh, gardener from the Manchester School of Technology to ask the next question? I had a student, I had a classmate who was nothing but born in America. Even though she did not need to, she was forced to take an EL class, which caused problems with her work and other classes and caused her to be less prepared for college. What can you do as mayor to ensure students who don't need EL classes aren't put into one? Uh, we can start with, oh, let's Thank you. For one thing, we shouldn't be classifying students as EL students just because we're receiving federal funding for it. That's wrong. It's happening in our schools. It's like Ridley. We overuse it where we shouldn't have to. We need to make sure that we restrict those who do not need that program to be in there. Just don't need it. The 17 cents on the dollar is just not worth it. Secondly, we have four great high schools. Why don't we specialize those high schools? School of Technology is already specialized. And it bothers me when certain aldermen who agreed to a four-year MST, but this year could not vote on extending classes because they'd rather bring all the the uh, school of technology back to the old high schools. The system didn't work. Today it works, and we should be proud of that. I would take the Memorial High School and I would turn it as a specialty for law and business. So remember, we don't pay buses for our high school students to come to school. So all the kids who want that kind of education will come here. The kids at Central High School will be for cultural, math, and science. And the kids who want to go to West High School will be for arts and music. Let the children, let the young adults in high school decide for themselves what they want to do as a career and choose the school of their choice as they are paying for their own busing. And the last thing I want to say is that we 
we to allow our students to have in high school a bigger say in their education, and we don't. Thank you very much for the question. It raises, it raises a couple of different issues. The first is there are students in the Manchester School District who need access to services and they are currently not receiving. That's wrong. Students that come from other communities that now call Manchester home need to be afforded the same opportunities, and that means that we need to know what they need, what, what their needs are, and we need to make sure we can provide them. I toured a school not too long ago, and I was told by the principal that there are students there that they don't speak English, and there's nothing really they can do about it. That's unacceptable. When I asked why that is, they gave me some stories about how bureaucratic the process is. They gave me some stories about uh, how difficult it can be dealing with administrators and, uh, I'd say, policymakers too. There's some friends of mine who are school board members in the audience, but it's not always easy uh, communicating one story to the policymakers. That needs to be easier, and we need to have more opportunities for people to do that, and we need to make sure people are comfortable doing that. Back to your question, though, the other issue is what do you do in instances when someone gets put in a class that they don't need to be in? We need to make sure that parents and students feel comfortable reaching out not only to administrators, this means beyond you know, the, their individual school and the individual principal, they need to be comfortable reaching out to individuals in the superintendent's office and reaching out to their school board members and their elected officials. A lot of people in this city and people in this room notwithstanding, a lot of people in the city don't know who their elected officials are. But we need to change that. And when people start feeling comfortable telling truth to power again, which is quite a difference from what we've seen these last six years, and I think that we'll find that we're able to get a handle on some of the challenges that you're talking about in the classrooms uh, of your school. So I thank you again for the question. Every child and parent who lives in Manchester and sends their kids to Manchester Public Schools should be proud. And if their child is in a class that they don't belong in, again, this gets back to communication. So I understand, you know, my kids have amazing teachers. Uh, we email back and forth an awful lot. We need to make sure that parents, all parents know that they can do that. Um, whether it's uh, uh, when the school opens or during the summer, uh, but we need to open up channels of communication. Um, there's a process that kids go through uh, when they sign up for classes. Um, you know, and, it, and it's, it is really something where the kids are on their own now. Um, everybody has an awful lot on their plate. We need to make sure that kids aren't receiving, kids that may be put in a class where they don't belong are not falling through the cracks. Um, again, whether it gets to guidance counselors or um, the department heads at the high school level. I can say that uh, all of my children went to Webster School and there's an EL program there. They have benefited tremendously from the students in the EL program and when they're mainstreamed into their class. They've been exposed to different cultures, different foods, they've been to homes that look different than ours. So it's really amazing and as a community we need to welcome this and embrace it. And when it gets down to the specifics of a child being put in a class that they don't belong to, we need to get to the bottom of that because it's absolutely wrong. Yes, and Red goes in and out. My answer will go back to my earlier comment that I made. We need to have onboarding in our school system. Uh, not just school system, but city of Manchester. We need to have onboarding for immigrants so we can train them and put them in a path to succeed rather than put them in a path to failure. That does two things. That fails that kid and also fails other kids who they are friends with in, in that school system. And on, without onboarding, like I said, you cannot put them... Today we are building part. Okay? 85 languages are spoken in the city of Manchester. So, Manchester is not white, black, brown, Greek, Latino, Lebanese. We are one community and one people. We need to come out of that so we can give everyone 
equal opportunity. And all men and women are equal. We need to understand that. If we come out of that, we will be successful city. And that's the reason why I'm stepping up for every one of you that please understand this. We are not judged by color, either white or black or brown. We are one people. Together, we are strong. Together, we are strong Manchester. So as a mayor, I will put those policies in place because I did in my company and it helped me. Within three months, those people knew what the culture is here. They knew how to speak English. They knew how to send their kids to school. And this is a time of taking ownership rather than shifting blame. So we must take ownership. We have 190,000 people live here. All of us have to take ownership to make Manchester strong. Thank you. Okay, we have, we're going to start with uh, Mr. Arnold in this question. Um, and the question is, do you have a plan to recruit and hire more educators of color? And what is your plan to move forward in this effort? Thank you very much for the question. As I mentioned in an earlier response, what we've seen these last six years is an administration that is closed-minded, an administration that does not respond well to criticism, as constructive as it may be. And we've seen a my way or the highway approach to government. No one benefits from that. Not a single person in our city benefits from a my way or the highway approach. Our community needs more voices, not fewer, participating in the process. And one of the things that the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights mentioned when they were making their presentation to city policymakers is that observation. And I think that, first of all, recognizing that where we are today is not where we want to be is a good first step. We, we are a diverse community. We have diversity and we have a multitude of cultures that surrounding communities simply don't have. And I think it's great. We need to make sure that we're maximizing those opportunities, and a great way to do that is to ensure that uh, they're great role models, as there currently are in our schools, there are great teachers in the Manchester school system, but we want to attract qualified individuals uh, from other communities as well. We want to attract people with diverse backgrounds who can become role models for other students that maybe they don't presently relate to somebody uh, as a role model, but we should make that a priority city and our Patrick Arnold administration, we would not be closed-minded. We would be looking at every opportunity for every single student. Great, thank you. That's great. Thank you. I agree that it's very important that students have role models that they can aspire to be. We need to attract more teachers of uh, different races to our school district. Again, I keep going back to this, but it's a matter of communication. Um, we need to make sure that those opportunities are um, sent out throughout our community, not just listed on a website. That's not going to work for everybody. We need to take a proactive approach to make sure that people understand what the opportunities are in our schools. I've talked to a number of folks from different countries. They have fantastic um, career backgrounds from, from the country they came from. Some were teachers, some were engineers. Um, and it baffles my mind why they can't have an opportunity to teach in Manchester. I do know that in Manchester, teachers are hired and they're given, if they're not um, specific to their, the discipline that they're, teach, that they're teaching, they're given a couple of years to get that education. And I would, I would suggest that we do that as well. As mayor, I would say that if we have someone from a different country that has relevant background and is capable of teaching, we need to, to hire them and then give them the opportunity to become a teacher in Manchester. I also believe that by approving this teacher's contract that I voted not once but twice for and the mayor vetoed twice will help us attract quality educators to Manchester. To me, that is the most important component of providing quality education. A, a great teacher in front of students uh, with a smaller class size. So that's what I would do as mayor. Thank you.
it's a wonderful question. Um, how I will hire them, I will call them for interview. And I will take my good teacher from the school system and match their skills, not the color. Because you know what talent management is? Right people at the right time with right skills in the right place with the right car. That's how we build companies and that's how we will build this city. And in my company, I had 500 employees. And I had employees from all seven different continents. So diversity, what it does is, it creates competition. Today, top 10 companies in the world are diverse. How much? 50% diverse. Google, Apple, Facebook, and seven others. So we need to make our city, are we not diverse? What are we not accepting? Let's face it, I'm here running for mayor, that's unexpected, right? But we are diverse. I came here in 2000 when, from Tindroo Shade School in Pakistan all the way to IB schools. This is what diversity did. There was my mom's inspiration, my teacher's hard work, and my Manchester, love of the Manchester that I got here, and I made Manchester my home. That made me who I am. And this is what I will do with every children, every teacher, and every city official in the city of Manchester. I'm welcoming and I love everybody. That's why I love Manchester. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have professors who have been in the city at South University or University of New Hampshire and Manchester, other colleges in our city that are PhDs. Some of them are Asian, some of them are African American. So I think we've proved they can teach, and they should. We need to stop stereotyping. Do you know that 31% of the African Americans are in poverty? And 22% of the Hispanic. Yet only 13% of people born and raised in Manchester are in poverty. Something's wrong with that comes again to jobs, to providing jobs in our city that people have skills to create, to, to work with. Teachers are the most important part in a school's district. It's come to a point now that Common Core is so demanding that we keep hiring more administrators and less teachers. Do you remember the old progress? That was created by our alderman, our mayor and our school board back in 2010 when they laid off 80 teachers yet we lost less than 80 students that year in our schools. What did that mean? It meant there were 80 classes that no longer had a class, no longer had a teacher. So what we did is we combined all these students into another class which created overcrowding. To this day, we are still paying for that. Let us open up the teachers the teaching to all those that can do the job, no matter the race, no matter the religion. When I went to high school and I went there, I, had, I come from a Catholic family and I was 99% Catholic in my community. We had one Protestant teacher. She did not change my faith, but she taught me very well. Thank you. Thank you. your plan to address facility safety in Manchester schools, i.e. the environmental, old, outdated lab classrooms, equipment, and or bus safety? Very good question. Uh, well, we obviously need to put a plan in place, and that's something that we, have not been ha we haven't had both on the city side or on the school district side. I think it was a great start with Dr. Li um, Dr. Livingston putting together a five-year plan this year. The unfortunate thing about that is that the mayor shelved it and didn't pay any attention to it. We need to have a plan in Manchester, and uh, it's got to be a fluid plan, but we need to understand what the needs are from an educational perspective, what the needs are from a facilities perspective, and uh, we need to um, communicate with uh, the school board and the mayor of all, the board of mayor and aldermen. Again, that's something that's not happening. Uh, 
as an alderman, I can tell you that um, I have asked numerous times that Dr. Livingston come before our board on a regular basis so we, the, the Board of Mayor and Aldermen, understands what the needs are from the school district. The mayor will not have that. He actually sets our boards apart. We need to work together to make sure that we are providing everything that we need for the school district from an educational perspective, again, a resource perspective. Um, without the communication and without the buy-in from both boards, it's not going to happen. So I would work to facilitate that process. Thank you. It's a great question. First thing what I will do is I will reduce expenses in every department to create more revenue because the problem, this is the question of how we create more revenue. In New York, when they face with the same issue, they cut a little bit of, trim a little bit of expenses, they generated $90 million in the revenue. Here in the city of Manchester, by doing a little bit of cut, we can generate $5 million and I can do this within 30 days. This is what New York did, this is what I do, this is what I will do. Because that mayor was an entrepreneur. He understand when you don't make revenue, when your expense is here, revenue is here, the society don't grow. And the other thing I would do is we have a collection rate gap. How we collect real estate tax. There's a 7 to 10% gap there. So I will reduce that by 1%. By reducing 1%, you will generate $2 million right away. So I'll create right process in place, how to collect the taxes, and that will generate revenue immediately. And another thing I will do is, I'll create more revenue generating methods of including enhancing facility and permits and fees. So these are the initial steps that I will take. I have a bigger plan than that, that I talked about Sister City. Once, I'll take small steps and big steps. So this is my small steps. They will generate about eight to ten million dollars in the city, and my big step will generate hundreds of million dollars in the city. Thank you. So in the city of Manchester, we do not have a revenue problem. We have a spending problem. If you gave both boards a billion dollars this year. They will come back next year and say, oops, I couldn't solve your problems, can I have another billion? Here's an example. We have laws in this city that if you own a building, like a tenant building, you need to have it inspected every three years. Yet for 15 years, we've owned portable classrooms, and not once did the city inspect our students' portable classrooms. Why? Because these kids don't have a voice. They don't count the politicians, unfortunately. The only time they did the inspection, if you remember not too many years ago, is when the portables were falling apart, when, when those stairs were falling apart, and they found out that 80% of them were rotten. We couldn't even move a portable classroom this past year out of Lee Street for free. And do you know why? Because it was so full of mold, you could not have got a city permit to use it again. Yet we allow our students to have class in those portables because we relax the rules because kids don't have a voice. That's not right. We need to do better for our students and our politicians have failed. Also is, we are being feed to death. Just this past month, we discovered that the car registration had gone a whopping a quarter million dollars over what they normally pick up. Some of the audience said, can we use that money? Bill Sanders says, no, I took 75,000 for the use. This is one month. They are so anxious to use the money before it even gets there on their desk. We need to follow regulations. We need to relax them, and we need to make sure that our kids' safety are just as important as our adults. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. It's troubling to know that some schools in our city have a lot more than other schools. 
Recently in the news, we heard about some portable classrooms being retired. That's crazy that we're still talking about things like that. It's crazy that there are some schools in our school district that aren't as safe as other schools. And I agree that the only way we're going to change that is by bringing people together, but something that's even more significant, more important to do, is to achieve results. I support bringing people together. I work with everybody. I will work with everybody. I'll continue to do that. I'm particularly proud to have bipartisan support from the Manchester School Board. Dr. John Avar has worked very hard on negotiating a contract with city educators. He knows what it's like to have to achieve results. And that's what I'll do as mayor. We should be results driven. And every single school in this city should be a safe environment for every single student in the city. Great, thank you. What kind of professional development could you offer teachers to create an engaging 21st century classroom for all learners? Well, I'll provide technology, iPads, laptops, and right trainings and skills and knowledge. So we will train them, we will have trainers to train them one-on-one. And I want to make sure our teachers excel in the 21st century education. If they excel, then they can teach our kids very well. So right now we do not have that training facilities. So I will create training facilities. So every teacher will be trained and we'll do a pilot program first. We'll train one school at a time, see what works, what doesn't work, and then we duplicate to other schools. And then all 23 schools will be trained equally within one year. In our school district where they've added much more for professional training. I welcome that because it's long overdue. What disturbs me the most is that we buy brand new books at cost of millions and five years later we need to replace them for two reasons. One, we've cut off 90 classes out of our school system. What did those books go to? They were only used one year. They were sent to third world countries. That's all nice and dandy, but we couldn't afford that because they didn't have a plan then. Two, teachers have textbooks. Yet this last year, because of Common Core, most of their, I wouldn't say training, most of their facilities, their paperwork, comes out out of somebody more mighty than the book or the teacher from Common Core. Well, every week they send it through a fax what they're going to teach our kids. These are people who were never even taught in education. I say let the teacher teach. That's their specialty. And if they don't do the job right, they won't stay there. Especially if you've been there for the first five years. So we need to tell people like the government to get federal government to get out, allow parental rights which we no longer have, because five bills were created and passed in the House of Senate and Congress, and they've all been vetoed. They do not want you to have parental rights. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thanks for the question. 21st century technology in our city classrooms. Teachers I talk to tell me what it's like in the classrooms of our school district, and I believe that we are years, years behind where we should be. Manchester can and should be paving the way in terms of technology in our classrooms. I, not, not too long ago, when I toured uh, one of the high tech companies in Manchester, Dime, down in the mill yard, they were doing some phenomenal things over there. And in partnership with them, Mayor Baines was heading up the STEAM Ahead program over at West. That should be an opportunity for every single school in this district. It's not big enough. It should have been rolled out, providing opportunities for all of the students of the Manchester School District. So when you ask me what will I do as mayor to help promote 
21st century technology in our classrooms and help teachers utilize those technologies. I want to see not just one dime. I don't want to just see one high-tech company or two high-tech companies in Manchester. I want us to be the high-tech center of the region. And if we have someone in the corner office that is not complacent with the status quo, who says, yes, here's where we are today, here's where we want to be tomorrow, and I'm going to go make it happen, you will find that we can go to the Boston market, recruit jobs, recruit uh, businesses, especially high-tech businesses, to come relocate to Manchester. We will build partnerships with those companies to ensure that the teachers of the Manchester School District have every single tool in their arsenal so that they can do their job effectively. Let's get out of the 1980s, 1990s, and even the early 2000s when we're talking about utilizing technology in Manchester classrooms. Let's talk about the classrooms of tomorrow and how we get there. Great, thank you. voted for twice the teacher's contract last week. Uh, the mayor vetoed it. I'm not sure if I've mentioned that or not. But what I want to say is that that contract included a number of enhancements to education in our city. One very important point is that we doubled the number of professional development hours for our teachers. We haven't done that in years, and it's much, much needed. When it comes to you know, what the professional development would be. Um, I hear from a number of teachers that say, you know, we'll go for a day, we have a enrichment, we have professional development, and it's not relevant. As mayor, I would work with our teaching staff to get a sense from them on what the needs are. And they're different from an elementary to a middle school to a high school teacher. But the mayor of our city has to work with our teaching staff so that she can provide them with the resources that they need again to teach our kids uh, the best that they can. What the mayor has done is he's shown that he does not respect education in Manchester. He's been dragging our education backwards. We need to start working in the right direction together and bring Manchester to where it needs to be. Thank you. I want to do a quick check-in with the, uh, with the uh, candidates here to make sure everybody's doing okay. Uh, there's water underneath. Uh, uh, what you don't realize sitting there, it's about 10 degrees hotter up here with the, with the lights on. So, uh, everybody's okay? No problems? Okay. Timekeeper's good? All right. Here we go. We'll do a lot. The next question we're going to start with Mr. Willett. And it would be asked is how would you support early intervention services and preschool for teachers' youngest children, and Manchester's youngest children? sure they are ready to learn when they enter kindergarten. Thank you. Preschool to K, kindergarten, are very precious years where kids are still at play and shouldn't have. The same education is given to a third grade level. They should be allowed to play. But they often need to educate, so we need to take the preschool and kindergarten and make education fun. Because that's what preschool and kindergarten do. Fun. So we need to have more games so they can relate to the education. Also, once you hit the third grade level and you cannot read or do the third grade math, automatically in the fourth grade you will get a tutor. And if you still don't get it, you will get a tutor in the fifth grade, and I'll tell you why. Can you imagine when you graduate from the fifth grade and you go to a new school, and you're carrying a 20,000 pound backpack because you can't get the lesson. That's why we have Title I money, to make sure that no child is left behind. And I'm going to make sure that the money is used for that exact reason. In our city, there is a lot of waste in city and school spending. Too much money that we get from grants or foundations, and we use it so much for something else. And you wonder why the program is not working. So preschool to kindergarten is a very important years to introduce education to our students. Glad to hear an early childhood question as my wife and I have these conversations.
conversations almost daily at an encounter. My vision for the Manchester School District is simple. We're supposed to have, as the largest city in the state, the very best schools in the state of New Hampshire. That's not going to happen unless we, unless we ensure that every opportunity is taken for early childhood intervention. When we invest in early childhood programs, we can map the societal consequences of that. We can see societies benefiting from additional investment, from additional attention, from additional educational opportunities for the youngest members of our student population. Education has not been a priority these last six years, but for any, any person, who, as I do, wants to see Manchester leading in the state of New Hampshire so that one day we are known to have the very best schools and have the very best educational opportunities in, in New Hampshire. For anyone who wants to see that happen, early childhood programs, kindergarten and pre-kindergarten, needs to be a very, very significant part of that conversation. And I look forward to leading that conversation with one of us. Thank you. Thank you. school that my kids went to didn't have it, so we had to pay for it out of our pocket. Um, it wasn't fair. Uh, I'm very proud to say that as an alderman, I passed a budget where every school in Manchester, every, every elementary school now has full day kindergarten. Very, very important. Um, I agree in terms of the early childhood programming uh, from early intervention to preschool as well. That's something that I would absolutely advocate for. I actually have two children who went through uh, an early, early intervention. They were delayed in they had speech therapy. So someone came to our house and helped them get to where they needed to be. I had to work very hard to make sure they got those services. And if I didn't know how to advocate, it wouldn't have happened. Um, I didn't receive uh, calls back when I should have. I kept on it. So that's something that we need to make sure isn't happening today. Uh, we need to make sure that these services are available to every family who needs them. We need to make sure that the families understand what opportunities are out there for them. Again, uh, it, it boils down to communication and making sure that families know what's available and that we make it as easy as possible from the district and city perspective for them to take advantage of these programs. So when their kids start in the Manchester School District in kindergarten, they are where they need to be and can continue going forward. Thank you. So my vision for students is to make sure they inspire and prepare to succeed in global society. And that starts from pre-K. And I'll make sure I allocate the budget for teachers, classes, so every school have pre-K and K and have the 21st century education place in place from pre-K. So this is our youth and this is how it starts. So if you train them to success, they will be successful. But if you do not have right tools and right resources, then there's a problem. So I'll make sure there is a gap, opportunity gap. So I'll fill that gap through providing and allocating dollars in every year budget. And how I will do that by bringing sister city and by cutting the, uh, because education is more important rather than using unnecessary funds in every department like paper, water, stationery. Our kids have to thrive in the school. Our kids have to thrive in the city of Manchester. If they thrive, we thrive, because they are our future, and we must invest in our kids starting from pre-K. I did a check-in with the uh, candidates. How are people doing out there? We holding up pretty good? There's a lot of waving going on here, so. Um, we've got a few more questions here that we're going to do, and then we're going to give them an opportunity to uh, to give a couple of closing statements. Uh, we could go till 8 o'clock, uh, probably with the questions that we have. Um, but I'm going to depend on the audience a little bit to get some sense of how you're doing. Um, so can you hold up for another 15 minutes or 
see a show of hands. Another 50. Can you, can you hold up for another half an hour? Show of hands. All right. We've got a little luck for you. Okay. Um, and I think we get most of this done. So we're going to stop with Mr. Arnold with this question. Uh, there are several areas of the city where incidents of violence and crime are extremely high. The children living in these areas face more health issues and childhood trauma and stress than their peers in safer neighborhoods. What is your plan to address these high crime areas and keep our children safe? Thank you very much for that question. As I said earlier, through my conversations with individuals all over the city, there is a very profound concern about the difference, the opportunity gap, as I call it, the difference between the haves and the have-nots in Manchester. People that live in one part of the city don't feel as though, that, as though they are receiving the same services that are being received by people who live in other parts of the city. That's not right. And it's avoidable. It's a matter of priorities. It's a matter of leadership. And in a Patrick Arnold administration, you would see a leveling of that playing field. You would see us pay attention to every single neighborhood to address concerns about public safety. You would see us address every single neighborhood in terms of ensuring that there are extracurricular activities for the students in that, in that uh, school district. You would see us ensure that the families in every single neighborhood feel safe to walk their streets. When it comes to public safety, the way you do that is you make sure that accountability is at the forefront of the discussion. What we've been doing these last few years, it hasn't been working. I remember in 2013 when Mayor Gatsis and I had a debate, he said that the criminals are getting the message. I don't think that was true then. I certainly don't think that's true now. People are scared to walk the streets of their own neighborhood, and that is unacceptable. It's unacceptable because we all are proud to call Manchester home, and we don't like to see where we have come these last several years as this problem has only worsened. I will introduce accountability to this discussion. It will be the forefront of this discussion. It will be results-driven, and we will make sure that our streets are safe again. It's called predictive policing, 
and surveillance system. And like I mentioned earlier, many cities in the country are using it, while we are not using it. We don't have to pay for that too. I will fight for you. I will go to the Washington DC. I have found the process how it will be done. It will take only 90 days. We need to come out and think outside of the box. Think about the solution rather than about problems. In the city of Manchester, what I hear 95% of time, our politicians invest in problems and talking about problems. When you spend 95% of time in problems, then you do not have energy to figure out solution. As an entrepreneur, what we do is, if you have a problem, you come tell me, I'll go find a solution for you. If you don't have it here, I go anywhere I have to, I will find it for you. That's what I did with my every company. This is why I was standing up for you, because I saw the problem. Living in 15 years, when I look back, city was not like what it was 15 years ago. 15 years ago, I could have 